Good evening. I, Devan Sehgal, a student of B.Tech, CSE Core, first year, first sem of VIT University, Pello, would like to discuss on the topic biochips as an essential evaluation component of PATLAB Assessment 3 in ENG 1902 Technical English 2. This is the table of contents. As you can see, we'll be discussing about the definition, the uh, some history, the working principle and components of biochips, the different types of biochips, their applications, advantages and disadvantages. Starting with what is a biochip? In molecular biology, biochips are essentially miniaturized laboratories that can perform hundreds or thousands of simultaneous biochemical reactions. Biochips enable researchers to quickly screen large number of biological analytes for a variety of purposes, from disease diagnosis to detection of bioterrorism agents. Typically, they're the size of an uncooked rice grain. They are so small that they can be injected into the human skin using a hypodermic syringe needle. In humans, it is typically injected between the thumb and the index finger, while in pets, it is usually uh, behind their necks. Some history of biochips. Though biochips uh, development began early with the work of sensor technology in 1950s, the American tech company by the name of Affymetrix developed the first biochip named GeneChip, which comprised of a number of DNA sensors used for finding defects. Let's discuss the components and working principle behind biochips. Biochips require a microarray technology, transduction and signal processing technologies to output the research of and results of sensing experiments. A biochip comprises of two main components, a transponder and a reader. Transponders are usually of two types, namely active transponder and passive transponder. The biochip you see in front of the screen is a passive uh, transponder. It means that it does not contain any energy of its own and it is not active until the operator activates it by giving it a low electrical charge. This transponder consists of four parts such as the antenna coil, uh, the capacitor, the microchip and the glass casing. The computer microchip stores a unique identification number called UID, which ranges from 10 digits to 15 digits long. The antenna is a very small, primitive, and this type of antenna is used to send and receive signals from the scanner or reader. The charging of the Turing capacitor can be done with a small signal, about one thousandth of a charge, which is sent to the operator. The glass capsule holds the antenna coil, capacitor, and microchip, and it is usually made of biocompatible material namely soda lime glass. A reader or scanner comprises of a coil, namely the exciter, and it forms an electromagnetic field through radio signals. It offers the required energy to activate the biochip. The reader carries a receiving coil for receiving the ID number or transmitted code sent back from the excited implanted biochip. Now there are three types of biochips, mainly the DNA array, the microfluid chip, and the protein microarray. The DNA microarray is a, a set of tiny DNA spots fixed to a strong surface. A researcher utilizes it to calculate the expression levels for a large number of genes. Every DNA mark comprises picomoles of particular genes, which are termed as probes. These can be short segment of a genetic material under high rigidity situations. 
Usually, probe target hybridization is noticed and counted by recognition through DNA labels called fluorophore or Kenny luminescence. The initial automated icon based analysis was published in the year 1981. Second is microfluid chip or lab on a chip as they are called. They are a usual choice of biochemical laboratories and are transforming several applications like DNA analysis, molecular biology procedures, and proteomics, the study of proteins and diagnostics of diseases. These chips are becoming more complex by using thousands of components, but those components are designed physically in a something called as a bottom-up full custom plan, which utilizes a very large task force. The third, protein microarray, or a protein chip method is used to follow the actions as well as connections of proteins and to find out their functions on a large scale. The main advantage of protein microarray is that we can track a large number of proteins in parallel. These protein chip comprises of a surface for supporting like a micro teeter plate or bead, a nitrocellulose membrane and the glass slide. These are automated, rapid, economical, very sensitive and consume less quantity of samples. The first methodology of protein chips was introduced in the antibody microarrays of scientific publication in the year 1983. The technology behind this chip was quite easy to develop for DNA microarrays, which have turned into the most generally used microarrays. Coming on to the applications of biochips, biochips can be or uh, have been used uh, for tracking and identification of animals uh, uh, in circa 1983 in a fishery. Now, it is used widely in zoos to monitor pets and animals. It can store all the necessary data from medical and financial records to demographic data. It can be used for medical purposes as a glucose detector, a BP detector, oxygen level detectors, a heartbeat detector, and many others. They can basically replace all types of vital data from your passports to cash. There may be a time where physically carrying things is deemed obsolete. The advantages of biochips are very clear. They can be helped to, they can be used to rescue the sick through early detection systems. They are very small in size, powerful, and faster than regular medical equipment. They can be used in finding the lost people or animals. They can be used as an identification method. Also, biochip, biochips perform thousands of biological reactions in a few seconds, which can take traditional labs days, giving live report on the patient's condition, helping doctors save lives. The disadvantages of biochips is that it is very expensive. They also raise of dangerous problems of privacy as they can make it easier for people or governments to spy on us. It is feared that implanting biochips may mark the end of human liberty and self-respect. If the chips become strong and versatile enough, there is a chance of turning every person into a controlled one. And lastly, biochips can be fixed into humans' body without their interference and can be used on spying on them without their consent. Concluding my thoughts on biochip technology, a chip implanted somewhere in human bodies might serve as a combination of credit card, passport, driver's license, or personal diary. No longer would it be necessary to worry about losing your credit card while traveling. A chip inserted into human bodies might also give us extra mental power. These are really fascinating ideas which are still under development. 
but we are close. The prohibitive cost of biochips is preventing their mainstream adaptation into the world. But as research goes further and due to economics of scale, it is bound to come down. The day in which we have chips embedded in our skins is not too far from now. This is not science fiction stuff anymore. This is a true example to prove that science really starts with fiction. Thank you 